channel and press the bell icon to get the latest update. From how early earth possibly became suitable for life to how England's iconic Stonehenge withstood the test of time. These are some of the stories we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. In a first, scientists in Japan have developed a way to freeze dry sperm on a plastic sheet on paper. That means these samples can now be mailed via postcards. The method allows for mouse sperm to be transported easily, inexpensively and without the risk of glass cases breaking. The effort to freeze dry and preserve sperm was to enable enough samples to be sent to the space station for a study of the effects of space radiation on baby mice. The sperm was originally preserved in glass bottles but they can break very easily and so have to be cushioned to prevent breakage during the rocket launch. The scientists were able to mail the mouse sperm from the sperm book as postcards by attaching the plastic sheet to the postcard with no protection. One scientist even sent another a Happy New Year card with mouse sperm attached as a gift. While the rise of oxygen levels on Earth is key to the origin of life, for decades, the reason that explained this process eluded scientists. Now, as the spin of the young Earth gradually slowed over time, making the days longer, the amount of oxygen released by photosynthetic cyanobacteria increased. This is because photosynthesis occurs in the presence of light. The team studied present-day microbial communities living at the bottom of a submerged lake, Huron sinkhole, 80 feet below the water's surface. The water in the Middle Island sinkhole is rich in sulfur and low in oxygen. Bacteria that thrive in these conditions are similar to single-celled organisms that lived billions of years ago, covering both land and seafloor surfaces. The researchers show that longer day length increases the amount of oxygen released by photosynthetic microbial mats. This suggests that the Earth's oxygenation history and its rotation rate may be linked. While the Earth now spins on its axis once every 24 hours, day length was possibly as brief as 6 hours during the planet's early years. The famed stone structure Stonehenge, an ancient monument in the UK, dates back to as far as 5000 years ago. But due to its protected status, it cannot be drilled, cut or subjected to chemical analysis, making study of its composition very difficult. As a result, scientists fully do not understand how the structure has withstood the test of time. Now, using a core sample taken from one of the ancient pillars a half century ago, scientists have been able to shed some light on the composition of the monument. Before the monument got its protected status, workers in 1958 who were hired to restore the monument drilled into one of the stones and extracted core samples. Parts of one of the cores were discovered in a museum in 2019. Another was held as a souvenir by a worker who immigrated to the US and the third has never been found. Three years ago, the souvenir sample was returned to England and is being studied now. The team found that the stone was 99.7% quartz and that there were different grain sizes. One of them, which they describe as medium in size, formed an interlocking mosaic of crystals. This was as strong as cement, which explains how the stones that make up Stonehenge have managed to survive for so long. For the first time, scientists have found out why the planet Jupiter is so hot, despite the fact that it is located at a distance more than five times that from the Sun as Earth. Based on the amount of sunlight received, the average temperature in the planet's upper atmosphere should be about minus 73 degrees Celsius. Instead, the measured value soars to around 426 Celsius. The source of this extra heat has remained elusive for 50 years. Scientists have now determined that Jupiter's intense aurora, the most powerful in the solar system, is responsible for heating the entire planet's upper atmosphere to high temperatures. Auroras occur when electrically charged particles are caught in a planet's magnetic field. These spiral along invisible lines of force in the magnetic field towards the planet's magnetic poles, 
striking atoms and molecules in the atmosphere to release light and energy. According to a new study based on satellite data this week, populations in areas of the world that are more prone to flooding has increased by almost 25% over the last two decades. An additional 86 million people now live within flood-prone regions. Floods are among the most common of extreme weather events driven by climate change. Of late, frequent and heavy rainfall is making floods more frequent. Researchers from the US use data from the Global Flood Database, which collects data on rainfall levels, the number of deaths and the people displaced as a result of over hundreds of floods. Up to 86 million people have moved into known flood-prone areas between 2000 and 2015, which is a 24% increase. The migration is mostly linked to people looking for better economic opportunities. A total of 2.23 million square kilometers were flooded between 2000 and 2018, affecting up to 290 million people. Computer modeling additionally showed that climate change and shifting demographics can mean an additional 25 countries, including India, face a high risk of flooding by 2030. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, you can now join the Prince YouTube membership to get access to special membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on YouTube.